Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in to another video on TK's Tech Corner. I promise no more PSVR2 videos, well at least not for one day anyway. I bombarded you with two days worth of PSVR2 videos. So today we're going to just uh, record a video of a controller because I haven't done one of those in a very long time, have I? Hmm. Uh, so this controller here is uh, an 8-bit dough controller. Um, really, really big third-party controller manufacturer, make all sorts of controllers. Predominantly started with Bluetooth controllers that I think were aimed at probably towards more uh, mobile uh, tablets and gaming devices. Um, and they've got a, a massive, massive suite of controllers. You go out and check them out on their website. Uh, and not just that, they've got loads, but all really, really good quality controllers as well. Um, and the, they started replicating uh, old console controllers like the SNES, the NES, the N64. Actually, they didn't do N64, if I remember correctly. Um, the Mega Drive, I think they did as well. Um, and, and many other classic controllers that they replicated. Really, really good quality controllers. My favorite ones were the SNES ones. And I think I've got one here. Let me just try and reach over and actually get it. Um, and I can show you what I mean if I can find it very quickly. Don't want to waste too much time. Um, just rummaging around in my drawer full of controllers that you can imagine I have by now. This is one of the older ones that I bought, 8-bit though gamepad. I've got a, a couple of the controllers. Um, I even got their little mini one. That was just for fun. Um, but you can see the quality of their controllers. So this is their version of a SNES controller uh, with dual analog sticks. And the analog sticks, we've got L3 and R3. And the L and R2 button. Really, really comfortable controller to use. Great if you're, you know, emulating um, on the PC or even on your phone. Uh, and you want to get a similar experience to what you would of playing these games on the console. Really, really favorite. One of my favorites, by the way. Get that out of the way. So the idea of this controller here, and I ordered this months ago, and it randomly turned up from Amazon. Um, I thought they'd pretty much forgotten about it. The, the delivery date just kept moving forward, moving forward to a point where I completely forgot about it and lost track. And then all of a sudden it just popped up. Um, so uh, this is an, a 2.4 2 gigahertz wireless controller, means it's going to come with a USB dongle probably to connect to the PC. It says it's compatible with Windows and Android there now. It's not a Bluetooth controller. There is a Bluetooth version of this. Um, this is not the Bluetooth one. That one costs a little bit more. Um, and um, I think I don't think that model was available when I pre-ordered this thing anyway. I was hoping to get this on release date, which was, again, sometime last year. Never turned up. Um, but then, uh, ideally, it would be nice to have this on a dock, charging, ready to play on the PC, rather than faffing, getting an Xbox controller, trying to connect it up every time I want to play. So I think this is going to be quite nice. Um, let's see how it works with the Android. I don't know. Maybe you've got to use a dongle. I've, I've got this only one I could find. I've got another one here somewhere. But USB-C to USB-A. Maybe we've got to use something like this to use this on an Android device. Who knows? We'll test it out. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what this is all about. Got an Xbox controller here in case you're wondering why. Uh, for the obvious reason of comparing this to the Xbox controller because from a design perspective what you'll see is it is geared to look and feel like an Xbox controller. Now the fact that this is Android on it, I would have thought that this is more geared towards Windows and Switch if I remember correctly from when I ordered it. And that would make sense because you can plug the dongle into the Nintendo Switch dock, right? Um, and it's ready to go. Uh, I'm pretty sure when I ordered it, again it was that long ago, that my interest was Windows slash Switch because it would be nice to have into the dock of the Switch as I said, right? Uh, trying to get this thing out, uh, it's just like I'm never supposed to get my hands on this thing because it's a nightmare getting it out. Why they couldn't make the box any little bit looser I have no idea, but there we go. There's nothing in the box, I'm just going to get that aside. Um, get that out of the way and then you see it's quite a nice presentation once you're in you've got the sort of uh, almost looks like that controller doesn't it there similar different position of analog sticks obviously and then that's what they presented you with you and get rid of this surround here and get the controller out um, and as soon as I get it in my hand I can let you know how it feels it feels quite nice it really does feel nice uh, you get the sort of uh, Xbox-ish type feel. It's got more of a Switch 
Pro controller type shape where it's a little bit more boxed up with the Xbox One as you can see is a bit more angled. I'm pretty sure the Switch Pro controller is like this one. What I'm going to do just to compare it is I'm going to get it out. So there's the Switch Pro controller, right? That is more close from a shape perspective to the Switch Pro controller than it is to the Xbox controller and size wise it's a little bit smaller as well. Uh, the Switch Pro controller for me, I'll be honest, was is a favourite of mine, other than the fact that it doesn't have analogue triggers here, right? Uh, this is a really comfortable controller, and i played many, many hours of Zelda on this thing, uh, and other games, but Zelda, yes, loads, loads, over 100 hours, and this thing is just, it's incredible. It really is very, very comfortable, it's got a great battery life, um, it's just a very really nice controller. And you can pair it up to your other stuff. It's a Bluetooth controller. You can pair this up to your PC, your Android phone. I've tried it. It works absolutely fine. It's an absolute treat of a controller. I like the design. They've got the sort of transparent um, uh, front and back going on. Not highly transparent, but it's, it's sort of like black, see-through, transparent plastic thing. Really, really nice controller, that is. Let's keep that there in case you want to compare. Now, to me, this was... I thought a replacement of this. I'm going to probably have to go back and check what I've ordered because it's been that long, I can't even remember now. Um, let's set that aside. Let's get out the, I'm sure it's got a battery meter there. Hopefully it's got some charge. Uh, there we go, it's charged. It's got a little light flicking on and off there. When I press that button, it's probably trying to find its receiver. And then we'll have a look around the controller after I've got rid of the packaging. So here we've got the 8-bit uh, dough dock. Now this is nice. Again, you know, USB-C port there at the back and probably a cable somewhere in here as well, no doubt, which I'm not going to bother getting out because I've got too many C cables already kicking around. Um, but there is a C cable in there, as you can see, and also a bit of paperwork, which I may get out to reference how on earth they expect to connect this to an Android device might be that they expect you to connect to an Android device through a USB cable because it does say wireless and wired so you know there is an option there so that's the dock now underneath right at the bottom is a little trap door and this is where the receiver is so you can see the receiver there the 8 bit receiver um, and it's actually not just loosely in there it's got a USB port in there um, to actually hold this securely in place and how it's going to eject I have no idea I'm guessing I've just got to slide it out so yeah it's just slid out there USB-A port as you can see there and the USB port in there I don't know whether it's active or not um, I don't uh, this doesn't charge right this takes power from the actual console or from the PC but it has got a metal proper USB port in there now I don't know what that would be used for, to be honest. But there we go. It is there. Maybe, maybe you can plug this into the PC and the receiver stays in here. Ah, I think that maybe is an option. So, if, Or you can do that with your phone as well, right? USB, USB to USB. We'll try it out. We'll try it out. I'll get a C2C C cable out. I'll plug that into my phone and I'll see if the phone, if the joypad connects to this and works on my phone. That would be quite cool because then you've got a wireless 2.4 gigahertz wireless controller faster than Bluetooth connected to your mobile device. Nice. Not a portable solution by any means, but I'm going to leave that in there for now. Let's get the cover back on um, and this will sit on the cradle so you can see the contacts there at the back for charging uh, and the pins there as well. Let's just have a quick look at the. Let me get this box out of the way. Right, so now we've got the packaging out of the way he says let's have a look at the controller so you've got your left and right triggers triggers are quite nice they've got a nice angle on them um, they're not too sharp I suppose but enough to keep your fingers on them when they're fully pressed down so fully pressed there there you go um, I generally prefer them to be a little bit more of an angle but there we go uh, they're not bad at all nice size triggers let's compare them to these controllers here so the Pro Controller has got a lot bigger triggers on it. They're more easily accessible. I prefer them, um, but they're not analog. They're digital, just normal buttons. And then the Xbox One's obviously all-time favorite. Nicely shaped, coming in from the size of the controller. 
a bigger angle on them as well um, and ultimately my own personal perspective quite hard to beat um, so these controllers feel a bit smaller um, they're not difficult to find they're there but you know they, this part is all hollow your fingers going wrapping around them rather than resting on them which would have been a bit nicer if they had carried on that way and been a bit wider um, the trigger buttons also quite small um, I don't know why they haven't been very generous with those so yes you can find them your fingers can hit them I typically like to have my my control like this where my fingers that can press the triggers uh, and the bumper at the same time with this control I can't achieve that which is weird uh, just about but I've got too much movement going on there where this control isn't a good example the day one 2013 that came with the Xbox which one was it now Xbox One, I think it was, yeah, Xbox One, um, and this was the first generation Xbox One. Now, yeah, this even though these shoulder buttons weren't great on this controller, um, you know, I could, you can see there, I can hit the shoulders and the triggers, fingers in the same position with this one, not really. They do feel nice though, triggers feel nice, they've got a good bit of resistance on them, bumpers also feel very nice, um, and the face buttons, I like the face buttons because unlike a lot of the other controllers I reviewed this yeah you know, the sizing was wrong or the spacing was wrong this to me feels quite nice I mean it's not far from the original Xbox controllers I don't know if you can swap these around it doesn't look like they pop off um, but they feel nice quite similar to the Xbox one in terms of feedback the analog sticks they've got a very nice L3 and R3 uh, the clicks are nice um, they're accessible quite easily from all angles from the angles uh, it's a bit stiffer to push in but compared to these ones uh, very very easy um, different different story um, but over when they're here you're centered they feel quite nice and responsive the d-pad is lovely now 8-bit though d-pads for me I've loved them always loved them on the three or four controllers I've had their, their d-pads are spot on I think that's the same actual d-pad by the way and they seem to be using exactly the same component what it is inside who knows probably a bit different but this this controller is awesome this is awesome this feels really really nice um, I like that d-pad a lot probably a winner for me it really does feel like an old SNES d-pad and I love the SNES d-pad on the back what have we got we've got a switch here um, and that switch has got two letters on it, it come, it's come with the X on it I don't know if you can see that or not properly um, but the other side is a D so D and X um, and there you go maybe you can see it there D and X it's come on X we can switch it over to D now one of these is probably going to be for what they say is the Android mode other ones are going to be for Windows uh, I'm guessing or maybe D is direct and X is wireless and maybe the quick start guide might even tell us that on the back we've also got two programmable buttons so P1, P2 and I'm guessing some PC software is going to allow us to remap these buttons to one of these buttons or to maybe a combination of the buttons so that we've got some prototype stuff going on on the cheap they do feel very nice though they're very very easy to press so the fingers resting there very very natural to press them um, they feel right and on a controller that's not geared for mobile gaming um, more probably for you know PC slash Maybe playing cloud games with it these buttons now make sense for me on mobile controllers don't really make sense here yes they make sense let's have a very quick look at this because I'm interested in the Android connectivity option um, and it might tell me something that I don't know because I don't know much about this controller um, so you got the profile LED so these are the profiles here uh, there's three LEDs, so assume three profiles. Uh, the mode switch uh, switches to... Wait, it doesn't say what it's for. Right, okay, turn the mode switch to X. Wireless connection is X, so you've got the USB receiver um, in the connected in the win USB port of your Windows device. The mode on X, that's the, wired connect that's the wireless connection. It also says turn the mode switch to X for wired connection. Android is the D mode so OTG so there we go we're talking about wireless here OTG support so wired OTG support is required on your Android devices um, so there you go if you want to play this uh, on an Android devices as we said it says it's got to be connected via USB cable 
what I'm going to test though is if I can connect just a dock to the phone and this connects to here wirelessly that's going to be interesting um, because it does say OTG so let's check it out get that away because we've got what we wanted from that this thing has got some charge on it um, what's the right thing to do is to test it out I thought I'd gotten rid of the whole box but clearly I have not rubber bumper has fallen off from somewhere maybe a keyboard I don't know let's keep that on the side we might need it Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to get a USB C to USB C cable. Hopefully, it's a good one because sometimes these cables aren't always good. Just a cable that was lying in the drawer. I think we've got everything we need. Um, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm not going to test it on a PC because it's going to be very difficult for me to test it on a PC here. I could have tested it on my Windows tablet, but the tablet is actually being used as a monitor for me to record against. So Let's just test it on the Android device and see what happens. Right, I'm plugging that in there. This could work on the Xbox as well, the same, right? Because the Xbox is, I'm just going to say it's probably a Windows device. It's a Windows device, right? Running Windows 11 now, probably after an update. So what have we got here? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, I've plugged it into my phone. I'm going to put it on the dock. It should start charging, I'm guessing because my phone's got to provide some sort of charge to this device surely, right? It is charging. There's a very nice white light underneath there. Let me show you that. I didn't notice that when I was just uh, moving around, but if you can see that there, you can see that light on there. So that was actually glowing on the table because it's right at the bottom. Very, very nice touch. I like that. You can see that light, white, white light while going all the way along the bottom. Nice LED strip. And when it's like this, it's actually lighting up the bottom off the table there, um, very very nice touch. So it's charging from my phone. Um, if I pick it up, the light goes off, and the lights immediately come on here when I've picked it off. So, and there's a very very light vibration. So it's almost like it's connected to the. I'm guessing it's connected to the dongle because we've had a vibration from there. Um, so it thinks it's connected to something. This is connected. I think this is getting. That's interesting because it's not working right. I'm going to switch this to D mode, direct mode. I wouldn't expect it to work then because how would it? Because this is saying for OTG mode, it's got to be in D mode. OTG means I'm directly connected to the device, which in this case I'm not. So I'm going to switch it back to X mode. This is me being desperate, just desperately trying stuff here, just to see what we can get out of this. It's always good to have a play. It's definitely not working. No, it's definitely not working. Um, if I put it back on charge, it goes off. If I pick it up, it turns on and it gives a very, very light rumble. Just to let you know, yes, I'm on. So I like that. You pick it up and it's and it's on. It's ready to go. This is connected to your Windows device. Lovely. Pick it up and away you go. It's going to be nice for some emulators or some cloud gaming on the PC. One day if it works on the Steam Deck, might be worth a try on the Steam Deck as well. So we're going to go connect it directly via the cable to my phone. Just to see what happens. Let's rotate this sideways. And now I'm going to switch the mode to uh, D mode. Because that's what they've told me to do. And it works. As you can see there, it's working absolutely fine. Fire up Xbox Game Pass. Um, let's fire up. I normally test that with Forza, don't I? So... Let's just test it with Forza again. See how it works. Now you're going direct here now. There's no, no lossy stuff going on here. What I'm also going to try and do though, is I am going to just get this thing out. It'd be, it's a shame if it doesn't work like that, where this is an active USB port that, you know, you can just leave this in there and connect this to your PC. Have they missed a trick? They might have missed a trick, you know. I'm going to connect this into here and see if it works with the phone in wireless mode because if it does, that's not bad. I wouldn't be using this dongle. It's, you get a small dongle uh, converters to convert from A to C. You could use that very easily. Right, let's get some gaming going on. It's working absolutely fine. Let's recognize the controller. Horizon 4. Ooh, I fired on Horizon 4. I thought I had 5. 
Anyway, let's have a quick faff. It's firing up. Loading nicely. Right, I forgot what car I had in there. Absolutely fine. Look at that. It's working nicely. Get your phone connected to the TV for some uh, cloud gaming. This could be a way. No latency, no lag. Connect it directly to your phone or to a dock that you're using to connect to the TV as well. Such as this one here, for example. And you'll get a nice gaming session out of it. Working absolutely fine. Now when it's in this mode, obviously it's probably taking charge from my phone as well, so uh, you're probably not going to run out of battery, I'm guessing. Unless my phone runs out of battery, obviously, in this case. Now if my phone was uh, charging wirelessly while I was playing, it could probably go for a very long time. What I'm not getting here, though, is I'm not getting any feedback, which is interesting. Pretty sure I normally get feedback on this. Guide button works, let's just quit the game. I don't know, let's just try one more game. Wonder why I'm not getting any feedback. I know there's feedback in here because it rumbled when I pick it up, so definitely some feedback stuff going on there. Um we could try PS play as well, just for completeness, why not? Um let's just do a local connect. I'm just gonna cover that up to make sure no no personal Addresses come up there. PlayStation is turning on because I can hear it. It's just right behind me. And then we'll test it out. I think Gran Turismo 7 is the game in there at the moment because that's the one I was recording a video of last night with a VR headset. What an awesome experience. If you haven't watched the video, please feel free to go ahead and watch it. It's the last video on my channel before this one. Seems to be working fine. Right. Uh, and the controller is working as well. As you can see, um, I can put on some GT7. And we can have a quick whip around not going to play a full track or anything because this video is going to get way too long otherwise if I get engrossed in this but just to give you an idea of what's going on and then I'll quickly test it out using this dongle as well see if it works hopefully it would Guide button works. Yep, okay, it seems to be working. Yes, seems to be working nice. Alright, let's go to the world circuit and just do a quick arcade race. Nothing serious. So clearly it's going to work. No rumble again, not getting any rumble here. Um, I should probably try more Xbox games, but in any, anyway. Yeah, all the buttons are in order, in the right places. You can see that there, it's working absolutely fine. Not have to do any messing around with the buttons. This PS Play app, by the way, is absolutely awesome. Worth every penny. If you're wondering about the best way of playing PlayStation remotely, look no further. PS Play app on your Play Store. Do yourself a favour. How cool is that? Working absolutely fine. Uh, I'm going to quickly disconnect it and see what happens uh, and, and connect that so let's leave so the gamepad removed right so the app recognise that my gamepad has been removed um, I'm going to plug this in and 
a switch the controller is clearly recognized not connected to anything because the light says blinking away um, and then now that's interesting because it has detected that it's connected and it's working now this is still in D mode so this is working oh, while, while, while that's working I'm going to disconnect that again I'm going to plug the receiver because that's going to work I'm going to plug the receiver back into here Like, why why have they done that? Why have they put a USB port in there and not allowed you to use it as some sort of pass through? That should just work. Like that works. It should work as a dongle. So I'm gonna turn it on again. Ah, it works. It absolutely does work. It just wasn't working. Well, ah. Believe it or not. I think I've got a dodgy USB cable. I did say I don't know if it's a good one or not. Okay, it's connected. Maybe as long as I don't move it, it will work fine. So let's go to continue. And it's working. So that is, I would say, a pretty good setup. You don't need to really get your dongle out. You can plug that into your PC, it will charge your controller and you've got wireless connectivity to your PC just with that one connection. That is really, really cool. Now you don't have to go C to C, you don't have to, have to worry about having a USB-C port on your PC because the cable it comes with is just a standard A to C cable. Um, and So no problems there whatsoever, most people will probably be using a USB-A port anyway. So you're going to charge your controller and get connectivity through the dock, through that dongle in the dock. Look at that, how cool is that? Lovely. Works absolutely fine. Getting a bit engrossed in this game, and not, not doing very well because I'm more concentrating on what I'm recording actually to be honest, rather than actually looking at the screen directly. I'm actually looking at the monitor. Um, How's that? How's that? You like my skills? Right, so I'll end the video there. I've had a bit of fun. Really, really good. Nice, comfortable controller. Um, what more can I say about it? It's just a typical, what you'd expect from 8-bit dough. Good quality, third-party controller. Um, and I think this is going to work on many devices. I think this, it probably will work on the Switch as well, I reckon. Um, I wonder if I can quickly try it before I end the video. Never tried this before. Um, I don't know if I can plug an OTG device directly into the switch. Uh, let's, okay, Zelda's on there, right? Now, this is a dodgy cable, so it clearly isn't working its best. But what happens if I do this? Will it work? I don't think, I don't expect this to work, by the way. Um, really I'm just trying all the different things that I can okay yeah it's not working in the D mode let's put it into this X mode what's that all about no okay so might work with the dock though not to say it won't work with the dock it may well work with the dock yeah I've just tried to connect it directly to the bottom of that thing there and it's not working obviously this controller is dead so that wouldn't prove anything anyway because it probably just connect wirelessly um, but I, I don't know I'm not going to pull the dock out now and start faffing with it um, it would be nice to see this working directly on that I don't know if I can try it with this dock maybe to try and prove all the docks don't work the best on the switch some of them do some of them don't uh, Let's try, I'll tell you what dock I can try, I've got this one and I've also got the dock for the Steam Deck so we can also just quickly give that a try maybe before I end the video. Let's plug that in. So it's definitely connecting because it gets a little buzz when it's connected to the dongle there, it vibrates a little bit. So let's just try it in both D and X mode. No, it's not working at all. Okay. Um, we can try one more dock.
right, only because I've been able to find it fairly quickly. This is the Steam Deck Dock. Sounds like a mouthful. Steam Deck Dock. Um, let's plug this in. Right, that's in. And let's plug the receiver in here. Never tried this, by the way. Never tried the Steam Deck Dock. With the switch. I don't think I did. Again, it's taken power from it because it's connected. Um, and there's actually a little blue light on there as well. It's not a button. There's a tiny little blue light on the back of that. You probably may not be able to see because my light is fairly bright. But that shows that it's connected. Um, and in X mode it's not working. Let's go to D mode. Okay, now so this definitely from what I can see it doesn't work with the switch I will try it with the um, original switch dock and if it works I'll post a comment in the video just to let you know whether it works or not but on that note I'll end the video uh, thank you very very much for watching this video if you've enjoyed it please leave a thumbs up if you've got any questions about this awesome controller please ask them in the comment section below and if you haven't already done so please do hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner to show support to my channel really appreciate all the support I get and the comments and the feedback whether it's negative or positive I always appreciate constructive criticism thanks for watching and see you in the next video